This video is brought to you by Squarespace. As some of you know, I have recently entered into a metaphorical cocoon in order to begin my transformation into a Luna Moth. Or, more simply put, I am working on my summer rent fair project, which just so happens to be a Luna Moth inspired elven fantasy gown. And I have decided to, for once, show an ounce of restraint and break this project up into multiple videos, which does give me the ability to finally focus on every single minute detail, which is my favorite thing to do. I am so excited. So if you were here for the first installment in the series, you might remember that part of the design was this moth-inspired elven circlet crown thing, and I didn't get to that at all in the first installment of this series. But now, I'm kind of glad that I didn't, because I have fallen down a YouTube and Pinterest rabbit hole of wire wrapping, and people who make these elven-inspired circlets for Ren Faire and fun little elfy cosplay purposes. And, and I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at my inspo board full of Rivendell and Lothlorien and pretty elf ladies, and I'm thinking, what if, what if, stay with me, I just devote an entire video to making these? So today in this video, I would like to learn some very foundational baseline wire wrapping techniques and then make a couple of wire wrapped pieces for my Luna Moth costume. So in this video, I would of course like to make the circlet headpiece. I think that's a huge part of the look that I am going for. So that's the piece that I'm going to try to focus on and make look the best. But also, if I have time, and for the sake of getting more practice in, I would like to make some arm cuffs to kind of go at the top of the little sleeves that I have made. I would like to make some bracelet pieces to match the cuffs and just kind of tie that whole arm look together. And then I would also maybe like to make a neck piece just because the neck is also a big area of detail and interest in the design. So despite the fact that that is going to eventually have a lot of applique, I think having some metal work there would help tie all of the metals in together. This is a very experimental video and I just really like winging it sometimes uh, I find it to be very creatively satisfying and that's just what I'm in the mood to do this week. But before we get all twisted up in this metalwork stuff, allow me to bring you a word from this video sponsor, Squarespace. If you're in the market for a website builder that offers everything from an e-commerce platform to SEO and analytics, Squarespace gives you options for how hands-on you want to be to streamline your busy schedule. When you're creating your site, you can select the focus of your brand or business and Squarespace allows you to choose between curated, flexible website templates that you can customize to your heart's content with custom text, colors, and their drag and drop website builder Fluid Engine. Or you can let Squarespace do the design work for you with their new Blueprint AI system that provides you with professionally curated layouts and styling options optimized for every device that can generate your desired website pages, brand aesthetic, and flavor your written descriptions with a tone that perfectly fits your brand. Once your site is complete, you can use Squarespace's integrated SEO tools so that you show up more often to the people who are looking for the kind of work you offer. And you can also set up an integrated integrated online store that has every e-commerce tool that you could possibly need, including compatibility with a print-on-demand service that handles inventory production and shipping for you. And with new flexible payment options that make purchases more accessible for your customers, you can now accept credit cards, PayPal and Apple Pay, and offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay in eligible countries. So if you want to create your own professionally designed website or online store, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash prickly.com pack up to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you as always to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now let's go and figure out what it is I'm doing. So the thing about this project is I don't really have any idea what I'm doing. Wire wrapping for sure intimidates me. It's just you have to have a lot of precision and uh, an ability to make things symmetrical that I don't innately possess. Um, we're really butting up against the limitations of my abilities for this particular technique, but it also it also looks nice and it's elegant and I would like to maybe try to learn it. So yesterday I did go in and do a test necklace piece just to kind of see what my ability level is with this technique right out of the gate and I didn't really have a lot of plans going on with this piece. I just sort of winged it to try to see what I can come up with and like yeah I, I wouldn't say that uh my skill level is particularly anything, but I do know a little bit more what I'm dealing with with this particular kind of wire and the amount of pressure that you have to use and that sort of thing. So for these, I am just going to be using the wire that I usually use for wrapping my sculpture armatures, which I am told is something that you can use for this technique. I've seen other people use this. I am fond of just how pliable it is. It's very easy to work with, but it, it that also means it's very easy to put unintentional bends in, which is something 
that I've already experienced. I have an incredibly rough layout sketch because the other thing I want to do with this is just sort of have fun, follow my whims, and feel where my creativity takes me. I'm not particularly gifted at designing things like this where it's all wispy and intricate, so I'm, I'm gonna more so just feel it out and try to arrive at a design that is befitting of my lofty expectations for this entire project. No pressure. <laughs> but before we get into it, allow me to bring you a brief interlude of a solar eclipse because the moon has very appropriately blessed this project and it was overcast the day of the solar eclipse, but I tried to get some footage. <gasps> I see a little bit of it. Do you see it? Oh. There it is. circlet, of course, is to measure the old dome piece. I don't remember mine off the top of my head. Zing. My noggin is about 22 inches in circumference. So I have used half of that measurement to go in and make kind of a base sketch of the general design that I want to go for here. And this can kind of serve as a reference to keep me on track as I'm wrapping my wires. And also as a reference to figure out what would be the base wires that I use for this. Because again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not going to be able to wrap this entire design out of one wire like I see a lot of people doing who actually are skilled at this. So I'm probably going to have to come up with a general structure and then I can add on to it by wrapping a couple of other wires. I am very intimidated by this entire process, but I'm excited to get into it. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> so to begin on this design, I cut out a length of wire that was about 60 inches long. It seems long, but trust me, we're gonna need every single inch of that. And then I just kind of began bending it according to the drawn pattern that I had laid out. This was actually extremely helpful for this entire process, and I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Having an actual pattern underneath me meant that I could use it as a guide for bending my wire. I could literally just like hold the wire down to the table and basically use force to trace it over the pattern. It was much easier than trying to measure out different bends and swirls and try to eyeball proportions like I was doing before. Something else that was super helpful for this that uh, seems obvious now, but I didn't do the first time around was working flat. It was so much easier to work flat and keep everything super, super clean as I was actually working on it and just shape it later. I don't know why I didn't think to do that on the first piece that I was working on, but my brain just said, no, you want it to form to the thing. Ignoring the fact that it's wire and you could just do that later. I think I also got a lot better at wrapping my bindings on this piece. I made sure to keep the size pretty consistent throughout the entire crown and I was also pretty careful not to overuse them and I only tried to wrap the bindings whenever I absolutely needed them in place to like hold tension before adding more pieces. If I could wait until I added extra pieces to add a binding piece and do it all at once, I tried to do it that way so that I could, you know, bind them all at once and make it look as neat as possible. Towards the end of working on this piece, I did get a good bit more comfortable and I experimented around a lot with adding little inner intertwining pieces of metal going throughout the main design. I definitely took some liberties from my pattern whenever I thought of a way to wrap the wires that would look cool. And I also played around with using different like gauges of wire to get some size variation in there, which is a subtle touch, but I think it does do a lot for a design. Overall, I am pretty happy with this as a first piece. So this is where I am so far with the circlet. I actually think that this has been a huge improvement from my first draft back there. Um, I was trying to be a lot more careful with proportions and spacing and trying to make sure everything turned out symmetrical. And for sure doing it flat this time helped a lot. Obviously it's not perfect. Um, for example, this little loop here is a good bit bigger than this loop. And then of course, as a consequence, this curve that comes up on this side is also bigger than this one. So that's mildly upsetting. It's gonna be on opposite sides of my head and it's also gonna be towards the back. So um, that's an acceptable flaw to me. One of the other things that I was struggling a little bit with because it's just tiny and delicate and a little bit difficult to get exactly into place are these little wire joints here. I'm not great at wrapping them to the point where everything is 
flat and <laughs> where it should be especially in places where I didn't plant it that great and it's joining like multiple little strands of metal so to hide those seams and make the piece look like it was a little bit more metal worked instead of just twisted wire I did end up going in with a little bit of UV resin and just dripping a little bit on all of the ties and also just like in a couple of places that I think would make the piece look a little bit more interesting I'm really trying to make it look a little bit more like it was welded or actually forged in some way rather than the method I use just to make it look a little more authentic. And hopefully in the end the UV resin on the crown itself will end up looking pretty seamless because I don't want to leave these pieces silver. I've gone back and forth on it a couple of times and I've decided that gold is really a better aesthetic for this since there's a little bit more like of a yellowish undertone in the colors of a Luna Moth. So in the end I am just going to take some gold rub and buff and go over all of the pieces with that so it should give it a really seamless look and actually make the UV resin look like it's like welded metal hopefully I think <laughs> okay sorry if I look a little weird I have respirator marks on my face but the other thing that I want to do is make some little cuffs to go on the top of these sleeves I don't know if I want the cuffs to go over the sleeves or above them that's something that I'm still kind of trying to figure out because the sleeves don't go up quite as far as I kind of planned for them to that doesn't bother me all that much but I do kind of want something right here this, this is another part of this that I'm probably just gonna wing and figure out because the headpiece is really the part that I'm worried about in this video and everything else is just just practice and if I have time I also kind of want to do a similar thing like a little bracelet piece I don't know I'm gonna start messing around with this and see what I can come up with so of course I began by drawing out some patterns like I did for the headpiece and I really did treat these like learning opportunities by adding some more weird complex shapes and just having some fun with it I went through these pretty quickly because again I was really trying to learn and experiment and use these as practice and do some things that at least at first glance, I thought it would be pretty challenging, but they ended up being not that bad at all. A lot of it was just breaking down a base shape that I could make out of my strongest wire, and then any other shapes that didn't quite fit that, I could just add on with a slightly smaller wire gauge. To shape all of the pieces, I really just bent them until they fit nicely over my arm or my wrist, what have you. And the added bonus of using metal is that they are very, very adjustable. So whenever I put them on my body, they aren't going anywhere. It's really nice. I am super happy with how the cuffs are coming out. I was honestly really worried about these. I don't know, for some reason I thought that the fact that they're gonna curve like this was going to make them harder than some of the other pieces, but it actually was not a problem at all. I just made them flat again and then shaped them afterwards. These just make me really happy. Any amount of like small, intricate accent and detail on a costume like this, it makes my heart sing. So next I'm gonna have to figure out how to do the whole necklace neck piece situation because again, it's just here to to kind of accent the cloak piece. So I don't want to do anything that's going to distract from that later or clash with some of the shapes that I end up putting on top of this. Even though this is very much a first draft, I don't think it's a terrible start for the actual design. So I think I might just go with something similar. This sort of centerpiece where I think I want to eventually put some kind of pendant or jewel. It needs to be longer. I want to do more of these curls in that. I think in here could be a good opportunity for those curls. I'll have to see. But again, this neck piece is not the most important part, so I think I'm really gonna do some messing around with this. I have a little bit more practice under my belt, so maybe I can accomplish something a little bit cooler. Let's cook. Final test of my skills in this video was remaking the neck piece that I kind of butchered earlier. So of course I started out with a nice little wispy pattern. Of course after I finished drawing it out I had to pause for a moment of indecisiveness because I couldn't figure out if I liked it or not but I said you know what it's fine let's keep going. One of the most prominent improvements I think that I made over the course of working on these was how much faster I got. I don't remember exactly how long the first one of these I made took me but it felt like a while and this I think I finished in under an hour which was really nice. Of course the method for actually tracing over the wire is tremendously helpful for keeping everything 
proportionate and actually following your design well, especially on a piece like this where it needs to be mirrored and symmetrical on both sides. I think overall this piece ended up turning out really nice. Definitely a drastic improvement from the little experimental piece that I made at the top of the video, but I think I could have maybe even pushed it a little bit further and made some of the intertwining pieces a little bit more intricate. I sort of tried like at the very front of it here to do something like that, but then I stopped and I didn't go very much further. Um, it's not necessary for the design, but it would have been nice for practice. Seeing on these pieces was definitely a good appetizer for this technique. I, I think I'm sufficiently hungry for some more metal work in the future. Hello there, and welcome to the final day. As you can tell, I am wearing a Mountain Dew shirt that is actively disintegrating. You know what that means? That means we're about to have some fun. So today is about decorating and making all of the pieces look Party. The part where I get to go just ham on the details is always my favorite part of a project and whenever I actually give myself enough time to do that, uh, it's even better because it doesn't happen that often. So at this point I'm finished with all of the actual wire wrapping for the pieces. All of the pieces have also now gotten their little like resin touch up so that everything's sort of like sealed and looks a little cleaner and any like sharp spiky bits that could potentially cut me have now been covered up with resin so I don't have to worry about my shoddy wire wrapping job quite as much. So first step before I do anything else, all of these pieces need to be doused in a healthy layer of rub and buff. So let's go do that. So, I feel like adding gold just elevated the look so much. It took them from looking like pieces of wire twisted together to now intentional jewelry pieces. I really, really love how this came out. After finishing up with the rub and buff, I took to my garage to play around with some toxic chemicals because I'm gonna make some UV resin gemstones. I'm coloring these with just a little bit of mica powder and you'll notice me pulling out some blues, which might initially sound strange, but I do intend on making a matching staff for this project and I wanna make the gemstones glow blue. This is a Luna Moss project, so nighttime and celestial ambience is also a huge theme so I thought a rich blue would be a really nice glowy accent color for this project. After pouring all of my gemstones I just took them outside to the big UV flashlight in the sky to cure because my actual UV flashlight is garbage. So to begin my favorite part of the evening, first of all, all of the resin gemstones that I made earlier have fully finished curing, so I need to figure out exactly how I want to go about attaching them onto the pieces. I really wanted to find a better way to do this than, than hot glue. I did not find a better way to do this. Listen, I would use more resin, but the sun is gone at this point, and I, I have a dinky little flashlight that doesn't cure anything, pretty much, so hot glue it's gonna be, I'm sorry. We live in a world of compromises, okay? Uh, in addition to the little gemstones to add a little bit more color to the headpieces, I also have a bunch of beads. I got a couple more green beads today whenever I was out at the craft store, so I want to figure out different ways that I can add those on. Something that I I did find at the craft store that's going to be a nice little time-saving thing for me this evening because I don't know exactly how to go about doing this. I found some heavily discounted little moth decorations. So I figured, yes, I do want to eventually make my own little moth guys whenever I work on the staff for this project. But for the purposes of this video, painting those up to look like Luna moths is going to be a little bit more practical. And they were literally each 99 cents. So I said, you know what? This is probably a sign from the universe telling me, choose the practical option. So I did. Uh, well, I'll be back in a second. And then of course with the beating, something else that I very much like doing is just adding chains that dangle off of things because it looks very uh, delicate and fancy. So I'm going to probably do that as well. So friends, that is the menu for this evening. Does that sound like a plan, team? Okay, good. Let's do it.
Hello. So I've been working on all of the details for a couple hours now, and I did intend to do a good bit more than this, you know, as is characteristic of my taste. But I don't know, as I've been working, I kind of just hit a point where I've been trying it on, seeing how it looks, and I think that it's done. You know, I could go a little bit further in a couple of places. And Maybe I will eventually. But honestly, you know, I don't want to do too much. There's going to be a whole lot more detail on the rest of the costume. So I think it's going to be wise to keep this a little bit more on the conservative side. Difficult to see just hanging on a mannequin, but I quite like how everything is coming out. I think the gold was a good choice. So before I call it completely quits, there's two things that I'm a little undetermined about, and that's the little flowers that I wanted to add to the top just to blend the purple in with the rest of the costume and also my little Luna moths that I painted up. Look at them, they turned out so pretty. I would prefer if they looked a little less plasticky, but that's okay. Hence the decision that I'm probably going to make. So I don't know if I wanna permanently adhere both of these things to the crown because I like how the crown looks and I think they'll be nice accessories, but I wanna kinda of pick and choose where I put them whenever I'm actually like getting ready and I might even theoretically have a wig on. I don't know quite yet. So I think what I'm going to do tomorrow morning is get some little alligator clips or just clips of some kind and glue clips to these so that I can just, you know, put them where they look natural on the costume whenever it's all on. Uh, maybe that'll be someplace in my hair. Maybe that will be someplace on the little crown here. I just want options for the little accessories whenever I put everything together. This costume is, of course, still overall very much a work in progress, but in terms of these little Hi, Tiger. Someone wanted to be here. In terms of all of the jewelry that I made in this video, they're done. So, it's time for a little reveal. Hello everybody and thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. I hope I was still able to make this interesting even though it's sort of like a very focused part of a project and it has one video dedicated to it. Normally I would put something like this just in one big costume video but I, I hope that it was still entertaining and interesting to see me like really focus in on the details and explore a technique like this throughout an entire video. If you have not seen the first installment in this Luna Moth gown costume costume series. I'll have a link in the description. If you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend you go back and do that because then you'll actually see how I made the costume part of this. And this is a very, very ongoing project. I still have a ton of applique and embroidery to do as well as like make a matching staff for this. So if you want to see more stuff like this, I recommend you subscribe and turn on notifications. I don't know. Like, if you don't do that, you could miss something cool. That'd be pretty sad if you did. If you subscribe, thank you. I appreciate it. But as always, the biggest thank you for this video and all my videos goes to my wonderful, elegant patrons and especially my executive producers. Infinity131, Faith, Mossy Raven, Dirt, I'm not saying that name on the internet, ABW Makes, Sarah, Crimson Moon 04, A Wendu, Liana, Ermler Jean, Anubix, Breeza, Sony, Brian, Phoenix, Rose Draconi, Ira, Freedom and Gus Gus, Francesca Sliwa, Kat, Dodo, Zyl S, Agent Dot Sketchy, Thea Maia, Lovisa, Eloquid Silence, Megan Penland, Enozine, India Gloom, Hypnos, Katie, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, I Hang Out With Cats At Parties, and Bean The Bread. I think that it's gonna look pretty cool on me, but I don't think it's gonna look nearly as cool on me as it would look on the executive producer if she would wear clothes.